A decision tonight could reshape downtown Salt Lake City. How a proposed sales tax hike could set everything in motion. Iran launching dozens of missiles into Israel on Tuesday as their years-long conflict continues to escalate. Tonight, we hear from our local Jewish and Muslim communities. Four candidates on one stage, each trying to become Utah's next attorney general. We'll show you the debate coming up next. Well, we start the first day of October. No rain in the forecast. How long do we keep that going? I'll let you know. For all railroad crossings from Salt Lake City to Provo, quiet zones have been suspended. What this means and how it impacts residents coming up. The UFC is back in Salt Lake City, headlined by the champ Alex Barrera, and I spoke exclusively with him in a conversation you'll hear only on Fox 13. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13 News at 9 starts right now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Evans. The Salt Lake City Council continues to take public comment at this hour regarding the proposed half percent sales tax increase to pay for downtown revitalization. The council is expected to make a final decision tonight on the proposed increase, which would be used to upgrade the Delta Center and surrounding area for the Utah Jazz and Utah Hockey Club. It is a very big decision that is a major milestone in the revitalization plan. Fox 13 News reporter Mai Thiele Gooby joins us tonight from Salt Lake City Hall. Mai Thiele. Bob, you're right, it is a big decision and Salt Lake City Council members right now are actually discussing this item to decide whether or not to approve this 0.5% sales tax increase and finalize the revitalization plan. Now, earlier tonight, a diverse set of people took to the podium to give public comment. Over 30 people were there. We had a diverse set of voices. We had restaurant owners, small business owners, members of the Downtown Alliance representing different community groups, University of Utah, economists, and so on. All, all on different sides, having different opinions about what they want to see in their downtown. Uh, this is one of the hardest things I'll do as an elected official. It's a process that has been months in the making with strong opinions in the community. What other plan do we have to attract $3 billion of private investment to our capital city core? According to recent legislation, the city entered into a participation agreement with the Smith Entertainment Group that owns the Utah Jazz and the Utah Hockey Club to create a downtown revitalization zone in nearly 100 acres around the Delta Center. City building is a relay race. Don't drop the baton. A legislative committee has also given its nod of approval for the project so far. So the next step in the process is for Salt Lake City Council to decide whether or not to approve this participation agreement and to impose a 0.5% citywide sales tax increase that would go to SEG and this area. Some say it's going too fast. The rush timeline created by the legislature and Smith Entertainment clearly didn't allow enough time for these concepts and risks to crystallize and be analyzed. Revitalization of downtown should be put to a vote. It should be on the ballot. Some speaking in favor of the project itself. This moment is critical to establish downtown and to benefit the state of Utah for generations to come. We all agree that the foundational presence of the arts makes this district unique from others across the country. Former Salt Lake City Mayor Rocky Anderson says if the sales tax increase does pass, he will fight it. If you pass this heinous ordinance tonight, we the people will run a referendum. We will get enough petition signatures to get the matter on the ballot. Then we will overturn your ordinance. I'm standing for the average citizen, the senior citizen that says too many taxes. No, we don't want a tax. Hoping that whatever happens, communities and important buildings are preserved, like Abravanel Hall and Japantown. And hopefully uh, bring back a sense of what was lost in this beautiful and, you know, thriving Japantown that once was. Salt Lake City Council members right now are discussing this earlier. Many of them reiterating that this sales tax increase does not include groceries. Salt Lake City Council Chair Victoria Petro saying that if it did include groceries, this wouldn't even be a question wanting to support families and help the growth of downtown. We'll keep you updated with the vote as that comes in live in downtown Salt Lake City. I am Mike Legal B Fox 13 News, Utah. 
My Thiele, thank you. A Salt Lake City man had to go to the hospital this evening after being trapped in a burning home. Happened at about 720 near 448 North, 1000 West. Salt Lake City Fire says it took about 20 minutes to get the blaze under control. The victim in the incident suffered minor injuries. The cause of the fire is under investigation. And in Tooele, one person had to receive medical attention after being stabbed. It happened near Spencer's Field in the southwest part of town. Police say a suspect has been taken into custody. No word yet on what led up to this incident. We have sad news to share impacting Utah's Capitol Hill. Former Senate Minority Leader Mike Dimitrich has passed away at the age of 87. A Democrat from rural Utah, he represented District 27 in Price before serving as Senate Minority Leader from 2001 to 2008 when he retired after 40 years of service. In 2008, Highway 6 was named Mike Dimitrich Highway in recognition of his relentless efforts to secure funding for public safety. Reaction to his death is coming in from prominent members of the Utah Legislature. Senate President Stuart Adams says he was a dedicated public servant who spent decades serving the people of Utah. Dimitrich's contributions, service, and love for the state will be long remembered. The current Senate Minority Leader Luz Escamilla says Dimitrich was one of the first people she met at the start of her public service career and that he taught her invaluable skills, especially the art of negotiation and collaboration across party lines. And Utah Governor Spencer Cox says he was a champion for those who needed a voice. His leadership, kindness and integrity made him a true public servant and a good person. Mike's legacy will live on through the many lives he touched and the impact he made on our great state. He will be deeply missed. This evening I spoke with former State Senator Scott Howell who served as Senate Minority Leader as well and relied heavily on Senator Dimitrich. He was truly a mentor for me and I can remember on so many occasions when I would when he'd see that I was in a difficult situation with uh, my Republican colleagues, he was the man that I went to and he always gave me great advice. And I, uh, I, I genuinely will just miss him. Funeral services have yet to be announced. Of course, we will keep you updated as we learn more. Iran says it launched missiles toward Israel today in response to the death of a Hezbollah leader and others. Civilians are being told to go to bomb shelters and remain alert. In addition, Israel says several people have been killed in a terror attack in Jaffa. Israeli Defense Forces issued a statement saying that it's doing everything necessary to protect the people of Israel. The missile attack is being felt here in Utah as well. Fox 13 News reporter Chris Arnold spoke today with members of Utah's Jewish and Muslim communities. It makes me feel very uneasy. Ron Zamir with the United Jewish Federation of Utah says his son is currently in Tel Aviv. So he sends me a picture from the air raid shelter of his baby who's four months old playing with another four month old baby. It's a photo Zamir wouldn't share out of respect for his family. Here in Utah on Tuesday, Zamir reacting as Iran launched dozens of missiles into Israel. It takes 12 minutes for these missiles to reach Israel from Iran. These are missiles the size of a bus. What is Iran trying to achieve? A spokesman for the Israeli military says the country's air defenses intercepted many of those incoming missiles. That attack heightening an already tense conflict between Israel and Iran-backed militias Hezbollah and Hamas. We have 181 uh, high-speed, technologically advanced, incredibly destructive um, ballistic missiles fired at a tiny country the size of New Jersey. Rabbi Sam Spector is with Congregation Kol Amin. He also spoke about the shooting on Tuesday that took place moments before the missiles were launched by Iran, where six people were left dead after two suspects opened fire in the Jaffa neighborhood before being killed. That this is not a fight of Jews against Muslims at the end of the day. Again, this is a fight of 
uh, good against evil. Fox 13 News spoke with Satin Tashnizi, the executive director of the Emerald Project in Salt Lake. Iran's retaliation has been predicted for quite some time. I think that's why so many people, even domestically in the U.S. and in Europe and around the world, have been urging Israel to to do a ceasefire. Tashnizi is also Muslim and the daughter of Iranian immigrants. Israel has assassinated the leader of Hezbollah. Israel has also expanded ground operations into Lebanon. I mean, in a matter of days, escalation went from strikes to ground invasion. She gave her thoughts on how the situation in the Middle East could be de-escalated. The United States needs to stop arming Israel. We just you know, sent over $8.7 billion. And I believe, for one, that this war will end, and it will end with help by the United States and other countries. Well, on Tuesday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed to retaliate against Iran. Overlooking downtown Salt Lake, Chris Arnold, Fox 13 News, Utah. Stay with Fox 13 News as we continue to monitor the situation in the Middle East and show how it affects us here in Utah. A woman and a three-year-old girl are dead after a crash on US 40 near mile marker 36 between Heber and Strawberry in Wasatch County this afternoon. The Utah Highway Patrol says the woman was driving a Volkswagen Passat, crossed the center line and hit a Dodge truck. Troopers say the woman and three-year-old girl were not restrained and were thrown from the vehicle. Two juveniles in the back were also unrestrained but survived and were flown to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Two men in the truck were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries as well. They were restrained. US 40 was closed for several hours. The Wasatch County Sheriff's Office is seeking your help finding and identifying a Jeep Gladiator or Jeep Rubicon, which they say was involved in a murder case at Jordanelle State Park last week. Authorities say 61-year-old Patrick Hayes was traveling to his home east of Park City from Midvale on the night of September 25th. Video surveillance from the entrance to Jordanelle State Park shows Hayes' vehicle stop and the suspect stopping behind him. When Hayes approached the Jeep driver to confront him, investigators say that Jeep driver drove towards Hayes and fatally shot him before leaving the scene. If you can help crack this case, call the Wasatch County Sheriff's Office. Cottonwood Heights police are asking for your help finding a missing Utah National Guardsman. Investigators say the circumstances around 51-year-old Matthew Johnson's disappearance are suspicious. He was last seen September 20th near 30th East Fort Union Boulevard in Cottonwood Heights. His wife reported him missing when he didn't come home and did not report back to the Utah National Guard base. He's described as 5'9", 178 pounds, has blue eyes and a shaved head. You're looking at his picture right now. He was last seen driving a maroon Dodge 1500 pickup, which was found a few blocks from his home on September 30th. If you have any information that can help, call Cottonwood Heights Police. A bear spotted in Logan earlier today has been relocated to the mountains. The Division of Wildlife Resources got a report about noon today about a bear near Quail Canyon Drive. It moved before they could get to it, but at about 5.30 this afternoon, the black bear was found on the eastern bench of Logan near Mountain Road. DWR tranquilized the three-year-old bear and relocated him. Coming up with just five weeks to go before Election Day, Vice Presidential nominees Tim Walz and J.D. Vance took to the debate stage for the first and likely only time tonight. We'll have a recap. We are seven days away from the inaugural season opener, but first there's three more preseason games Utah Hockey Club against San Jose tonight. And as we look at today's high temperatures, toasty temps across southern Utah, near triple digits today in St. George. We're enjoying the 70s here along the Wasatch Front, but we're going to be feeling the heat. Do we return back to the 90s here across northern Utah? I'll answer that after the break. Neighborhoods between Salt Lake City and Provo could start hearing more noises coming from their railroad crossings. I'm Fox 13 News reporter Avery Clown.
Murkowski in Salt Lake City talking with residents about how transit changes will impact them. That's the sound that some Utahns will be hearing more often. I definitely think it's going to bother young kids. And it's going to definitely impact sleep schedules for early mornings because hearing a loud blare all night is not going to be fun. The Federal Railroad Administration found deficiencies in recent inspections, but didn't give specifics on what those deficiencies were. These put designated quiet zones out of compliance, which means this will be sounding at any time of day or night at all railroad crossings from Ogden to Provo. Just so it's safe for everybody. There's a lot of foot traffic. There's a lot of bike traffic. Utah Transit Authority front runners and freight trains must use their horns at crossings until the required maintenance is done to meet the FRA standards. As a person who's very much a night person, I feel like I'm definitely going to hear it a lot and get very annoyed by it. So I'm up constantly throughout the night. Not everyone hates the idea of using horns. Leonard Romero says the city keeps growing and he feels it increases safety. And so I'm used to them. Uh, I'm glad they're using the whistles because there's a lot more traffic with all this uh, brand new condos. Since the switch, people have taken to social media with their concerns about noisy nights. I understand people need their sleep. It's so important for our health, too. The Federal Railroad Administration knows it's an inconvenience and apologizes. But until cities can get in compliance, you might need to get some earplugs. In Salt Lake City, Avery Klanowski, Fox 13 News, Utah. We have a breaking news update on our top story from this evening. The Salt Lake City Council has just unanimously passed the half percent sales tax increase to pay for downtown revitalization with one council member absent. The city entered into a participation agreement with the Smith Entertainment Group, which owns the Utah Jazz and the Utah Hockey Club. The half percent tax hike will raise money to create a downtown revitalization zone in nearly 100 acres around the Delta Center. Again, repeating, the Salt Lake City Council has unanimously approved a half percent sales tax increase to pay for an agreement with SEG to revitalize parts of downtown Salt Lake City. We, of course, will continue to follow this big development and this story right here on Fox 13 News. It is debate night in Utah. The candidates for Utah Attorney General faced off at Southern Utah University. Fox 13 News political reporter Ben Winslow was there. In the open seat, we had four candidates engaging in a sometimes spicy debate, each trying to prove that they have what it takes to be in charge of the state's top law firm. The Utah Attorney General's office has been politicized for far too long. I am the only candidate that has refused to accept any financial contributions. This is a position that involves politics, but more important than that, it's a position that involves leadership. I would like to see the government of the state of Utah be kinder and gentler to its citizens. Each of these candidates is running to replace Sean Reyes, who opted not to seek re-election after being ensnared in controversy. Reyes is the third attorney general to face scandal, something that loomed over the debate. First of all, I'm not going to be a member of the uh, Republican Attorney General's Association and get together and do all this political stuff. We need an attorney general who takes ethics with the utmost seriousness and avoids even the appearance of a conflict of interest. The reality of it is, is we must be transparent so we can have the faith of the public. The way you create trust is by creating transparency, doing your job. At one point, they were specifically asked if they'd make their calendars public, something the current attorney general has fought in court. Mr. Brown. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. McCullough. Yes. Ms. Quist. <laughs> yes. Mr. Yes. Batista. They weighed in on public lands litigation. Negotiations are important. Sometimes lawsuits also work. We're not being denied access to it. This is all rhetoric to get the state to take over the land so that we can sell them for corporate greed. We are actually being denied access, and that's the reason this is so important. When the state comes in and says that we want more of the land under our control, is it, it's a money grab. And social media lawsuits. I have kids at home, and social media obviously is a big concern, but 
as Attorney General, First Amendment is paramount. When we have government intervention and freedom of speech, when we have government intervention and freedom of religion, we have tyranny. I would be inclined to absolutely keep these lawsuits moving forward. And I am certainly not going to censor it. Republican candidate Derek Brown specifically faced criticism because he's represented Meta, which owns Facebook and Instagram, and is being sued right now by the state of Utah. He says he will avoid perceived conflicts if elected. There is just a protocol for how you, you deal with this. And, you know, I would work to the extent that it, it needs to be handled by others. That's certainly something that could be the case. Now, if you missed it, we posted the entire debate for you to see at fox13now.com. Ballots begin arriving in a couple of weeks. At Southern Utah University, Ben Winslow, Fox 13 News, Utah. The Yellow Lake Fire is now 2,474 acres and still has not been contained. The fire was discovered Saturday east of the Mill Hollow Reservoir in Uinta Wasatch Cache National Forest. It's believed to be human caused. Officials say the terrain has made suppression efforts difficult. Highway 35 remains closed to allow crews to clear debris. Well, let's look at current conditions near the fire right now. As we saw it last night, we still are seeing a persistent breeze, west winds at 12 miles per hour, low humidity. Earlier on, the winds weren't too bad, but again, difficult to fight that fire and looks like we'll be looking at some breezy conditions throughout that region come tomorrow. Other regions, though, of course, we're enjoying the beautiful fall colors. Photo coming up on our Facebook page, Jennifer, a big Cottonwood Canyon near the Willow Heights area. A lot of gold out there. Of course, a variety of colors still to enjoy. Outside today in Salt Lake City, reached a high of 79 degrees. Again, looking at the average, we're seeing temperatures 6 degrees above average. Look at the record set for today. This is where we're heading at least one day as we move ahead, getting ready for the weekend where we're going to be warming things up. But we get a little bit of a roller coaster ride. We go up and then down, and then back up. But it's not going to be anything of significance bringing temperatures close to average where we've got a lot of 80s in the forecast looking ahead. Outside right now, we're in the low 60s. Salt Lake City through Ogden already in the 50s in Provo. Many spots getting down to the low to mid 50s. I mentioned these record breaking temperatures not for tomorrow or Thursday. This is kind of that roller coaster ride. We will bounce back up into the 80s here in Salt Lake City. Then a little bit of a drop as a weak front clipping northern Utah will usher in some cooler air. Then ahead of another front that hits on Saturday, will allow for some warmer temperatures on Friday. That's where we're looking to break a record. But here tonight, it's going to be clear. The temperatures getting down into the 40s in Logan, 50s in Salt Lake City, as well as in Provo. Looks like low 50s in price. Looks like we'll see temperatures not quite as cool as we saw here this morning. It's going to be clear and again another sunny day. A little bit of smoke here across northern Utah, no, posing no big problems for the air quality. But again, as we get back into the 80s, that's what we're going to be looking at here for northern through central Utah. Even mid 80s in Richville expected high in Moab into the low 90s. Once again, near triple digits in St. George. With these temperatures, what we're seeing in St. George, you're going to be looking at potentially tying some records here over the next few days. But you've got the sunshine. We don't see triple digits, but I wouldn't be surprised potentially maybe Friday getting there, but it's all 90s and maybe slightly cooler temperatures as we look towards next week, Tuesday. All right, 80s, close to 90 degrees on Friday. That's the record breaking day. Looks like it'll be a pleasant weekend, still well above average. And you can see for the next seven days, all 80s. And as addition, you can also see we don't have any rain in the forecast. We'll be back right after the break. We have an update to breaking news we first brought you last night here on Fox 13 News at 9. A group of volunteer searchers may have cracked a Utah cold case going back 20 years. Dave Sparks of Sparks Motors and Doug Bishop of United Search Corps have been searching northern Utah reservoirs this year for any sign of Stephen Willard Anderson. Anderson disappeared in June of 2004. Investigators say he was heading from Salt Lake County to a family cabin near Flaming Gorge, but never arrived. Yesterday, Sparks and Bishop announced they found a vehicle of interest with remains in it at the bottom of Starvation Reservoir. We spoke with uh, the victim's family and they want closure. Even if they find him you know, on the bottom of the lake in his green Toyota Sequoia, which is what we're looking for, that's a big deal. That brings closure to generations of a family rather than just thinking that their dad just up and vanished one day. 
Today, the Salt Lake County Sheriff's Office confirmed the vehicle was connected to the Anderson case, though they have not yet identified the remains found inside. The Boys and Girls Club says it has terminated an employee arrested on suspicion of soliciting sex with a child. An investigator from Homeland Security on Monday booked 25-year-old Patrick R. Baker into the Salt Lake County Jail. Baker has not formally been charged with any crimes, nor do the jail documents say he abused any real children. Baker is listed as the teen program director at the Murray Boys and Girls Club. You know that any organization, church, school, uh, should regularly be looking at and evaluating their policies, making sure that resources are available for victims who may want to come forward and talk about these things. The president and CEO of the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Salt Lake issued a statement expressing support for any victims and offering to cooperate with investigators. 4,000 purple flags are sitting outside the Salt Lake County District Attorney's Office. Today, District Attorney Sim Gill joined the Survivor and Victim Services Division to put up the flags. Each one represents a domestic violence survivor case worked on by the Salt Lake County DA's office. If you or someone you know is experiencing domestic violence, free support is always available. Call one 800 897-5465. You can also find resources from the Utah Domestic Violence Coalition at udvc.org. We'll be right back. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz and Ohio Senator J.D. Vance sparred for 90 minutes tonight in the vice presidential debate covering topics from foreign policy to child care. Scripps News national political correspondent Serena Marshall has more. The vice presidential debates typically take a backseat to the showdown at the top of the ticket, but with the VP debate likely being the last major campaign event of the 2024 cycle, it's why the lights are a little brighter, the stakes a little higher as these two candidates face off in the razor thin race for the White House. The two men hoping to be the next vice president, Democratic Governor Tim Walz and Republican Senator J.D. Vance. Facing off Tuesday night, pressed on key issues by CBS's Nora O'Donnell and Margaret Brennan. Donald Trump had four years. He had four years to do this. And he promised you, America, how easy it would be. I'll build you a big, beautiful wall and Mexico will pay for it. Less than 2% of that wall got built, and Mexico didn't pay a dime. The Border Patrol agents, they just want to be in power to do their job. Of course, additional resources would help, but most of this is about the president and the vice president empowering our law enforcement to say, if you try to come across the border illegally, you've got to stay in Mexico, you've got to go back through proper channels. In the 90-minute hot mic matchup, the candidates taking shots, forcing the other to address their, at times, controversial past positions and statements. The people that I'm most worried about in Springfield, Ohio, are the American citizens who have had their lives destroyed by Kamala Harris's open border. It is a disgrace, Tim. But like this campaign, the VP debate was more about the two candidates leading the ticket, both Vance and Walls defending the record of their running mate. The bold forward plan that Kamala Harris put uh, out there is one is talking about this housing issue. The one thing is there's three million new houses proposed under this plan with down payment assistance on the front end to get you in a house. Despite both these men being thrust into the national spotlight in recent months, there are still a lot of voters who say they don't know much about either of them. We'll find out, though, in the days and weeks ahead if either made a positive impression with those key voters in those handful of battleground states that will ultimately decide the election. Serena Marshall, Scripps News, New York. Draper police need your help to find in a man accused of assaulting another man overnight, sending them to the hospital. It happened in the area of 7th East and 121st South at about midnight. Police say the victim left the Kimball's Lane track station and was walking to work. They had a verbal altercation with the suspect who then assaulted him. Police say the suspect may be transient. Contact Draper Police with any information that can help. A Utah woman had to be rescued by helicopter from a California beach. Now this video right here was released by the California Highway Patrol. On Sunday, CHP was called to rescue that woman who had not returned 
after going to Willow Creek to hunt for rocks at low tide. You can see her right there. During an air search, rescuers spotted the woman on a rocky beach. She was picked up by the helicopter and taken back to her vehicle where she waited for her husband to arrive. An adult store in West Valley City will be allowed to sell lingerie under an agreement approved by a federal judge. Hustler Hollywood will be allowed to sell lingerie after a two year long legal battle. The store was told lingerie violates West Valley City's zoning laws. Hustler sued, arguing the city was violating its free speech and due process rights. West Valley City says they reached a mutual agreement. Hustler says they can sell lingerie and West Valley City will pay $305,000 to cover their legal bills. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs has awarded $620,000 in grants to organizations based here in Utah to fund adaptive sports. The grants are part of the VA's Adaptive Sports Grant Program, which currently provides opportunities to more than 15,000 veterans and members of the armed forces. The grants will fund adaptive sports, recreational activities, and equine therapy for veterans and service members living with disabilities. In the last nine years, the VA says it has awarded more than $119 million in grants. The CDC released its summary report on the One Health Harmful Algal Bloom System in the U.S. for 2022. The report says 15 states had 372 harmful algal bloom events with 95 human illnesses and more than 100,000 animal illnesses. Utah reported 39 harmful algal bloom events, 54 human illnesses, and five animal illnesses. Harmful algal blooms, algal blooms result from the rapid growth of algae and cyanobacteria in natural water bodies. Coming up, more women in the U.S. are being diagnosed with breast cancer. The story from one Utah woman as she expresses how important it is to know your body. And we'll show you some of the new menu items being sold at the Delta Center in the coming months. I'm Andrea Irvin and Utah Hockey Club has three preseason games left and one of those was tonight against the Sharks. I've got the highlights and UFC 307 comes to Salt Lake City this Saturday. I spoke exclusively with headliner Alex Barrera who has been training at a local gym here in Utah. My conversation with the champ only on Fox 13. October kicks off Breast Cancer Awareness Month and new statistics from the American Cancer Society show younger women are being diagnosed more often. Lisa Tecklenburg of Olympus Cove was 35 years old when she noticed an indentation in one of her breasts. She had a mammogram and then a biopsy. Doctors found a 10 centimeter tumor was advanced stage breast cancer. You want to know early it's so much better it's so much better if you know early and i know it's so scary take a deep breath it even if it is cancer it is like better to find it early so do your screenings it is worth it to find it early and it's so so treatable it's so treatable and it's so much less invasive if you catch it early Tecklenburg says it is important to advocate for your own health, including learning to do a self-exam and talking to your doctor. She says not only can you survive, but as she just mentioned there, you can thrive after your cancer battle. In fact, she is going back to doing the Ironman races she loves. Today, Fox 13 News got a preview of some of the new food items being served at the Delta Center ahead of the NBA and NHL seasons. Chef Travis Taylor says fans can be excited about a new menu with a few surprises and prices you might not expect in an arena. $3 hot dogs, $2 bottles of water, $3 nachos, so really, really focused on the guest experience. If you've never been to Chicago, you see we're featuring the Chicago dog game, the first game, um, and Ottawa comes in. We're gonna do a real fun poutine. If we can create a memory for you that 
oh my goodness, the Utah Hockey Club won and I had the best brisket sandwich. And that's my job, right, as the chef. I want to create memories for you. We all have these smells of being at grandma's house on Sunday and really, really want to just help trigger those and just give you a great experience overall. Fans can also expect new beverage options, souvenirs, and more. We are one week away from Utah Hockey Club's opening its inaugural season versus the Chicago Blackhawks. But first, the team has three more preseason games, and they were on the road tonight facing San Jose. It was a scoreless first period to the second where the Sharks found the back of the net for the first time. The slap shot by Matt Benning. And check this out, with 10 seconds remaining in the period, Sean Dursey with the wrist shot to tie the game at one all. And some players are still trying to earn a spot on this roster because it is the preseason. Kyler Yamamoto is one of them as he taps it in for UHC to take the lead and Yamamoto will score one more time. 3-1, the final in San Jose. This Saturday, the Delta Center will be home to Salt Lake City's third UFC event. It's UFC 307 headlined by Alex Barrera. He's on a four fight win streak. Three of those are straight knockouts and he's been training at a gym right here in Utah. And I caught up with him and here's our conversation that you will only see on Fox 13. Welcome to Salt Lake City. The last time you were here, he did win by decision, but we're hoping for maybe a KO to keep the KO streak going. So how's it feel to be back in Salt Lake? Bom, estamos sentindo bem. Os treinamentos hoje foi sempre complicado, né? Feeling great, training great here today. Last real hard training of the camp. Sean Strickland, Cesar Almeida, just ready and expected for a show for October 5th. What has been working for you in your successes lately? Bom, para mim está sendo muito bom, né? Quanto mais resultado aí positivo. Well, feels very good in general. More people seeing us, and but I think the main thing is to be a spotlight to show people and to inspire people. You came from Brazil, and over 10 years ago, you were in a tire shop. Really, a beautiful story. How do you want to inspire, and what do you take pride in? Você fazer as coisas certas, né? Tá bem dedicado no que você quer. Well, I'm living a good moment right now, doing good things, getting good results. I have a good team around me. The main thing is I want to show people that if they work hard, they discipline themselves, they can overcome and they can reach places that they do not imagine. Ten years ago, I started training, and I thought about like if one day I can be a world champion. Light heavyweight champion of the world. Then he became a world champion, he quit drinking, and then wow. he just wanted that to inspire people that they can reach anything that they want in life. Okay, last two questions. Your culture is something that you represent proudly. Why is that important to you? Important to me, the same thing. It's very important to me to show the war culture of my people. Back in the day, they used to go, the war used to go out, hunt their food, bring to their families, provide for them. And I do that in a different way right now, but I'm still trying to inspire people. Like, I'll fight, I'll provide for my people. How excited are you to take that octagon and perform for this city? Excited because I've got the results of my training. I've been training hard, I've been putting the work. Same has somebody that studied hard for a test. You get the same level of confidence. I'm confident of the training that I did to go over there and perform. I love it. Thank you, Shama. Thank you, Shama. Thank you. All right. Shama, Shama. Shama, that means let's go in, Brazil, in Portuguese. So. Well, and, and we do have to go. Yep. That's Fox 13 <laughs> News at 9. Shama. Shama. <laughs> good good day, Utah, at 5.30 tomorrow morning. Have a good night.